yet another brother from another. We got Ryan Harris, <laughs> as you can see. He's always ready for action, well-dressed, well-spoken, everything. Uh, well-researched, okay? You make well me feel underdressed. <laughs> uh, uh, both of us, both of us. But, you know, Ryan, I, I do, I, I gave you all these compliments. I wish I could give the team that you cover, uh, the Denver Broncos, I wish I could give them as many compliments as I've given you because now I'm starting to wonder, ooh, ooh, what's going on? What's going on with the Broncos? I saw, uh, I saw quite a beat down the last, I know it's preseason, but are you, are you getting a little bit worried about this, uh, this team that's gotten a lot of love in the preseason? Well, well, before the preseason started. Well, the concern definitely is rising here for Broncos country. Um, the run game, I've been at training camp, the run game hasn't really popped. The important thing to remember though, the Broncos haven't started any of their, of their starting skill players, including Russell Wilson. And especially against the Bills, yes, they got beat by almost over 30, but the Bills started all of their starters. I mean, Josh Allen went three for three on the first drive. You know, Stephon Diggs had a reception, defensive starters. Shaq Lawson played into the fourth quarter of a preseason game. I don't know if he made the coach mad or what, but there's definite okay, so concern. About to get cut, in, right? He's yeah, about to get yeah, cut. <laughs> but there's there's definite concern in Broncos country because the run game's not there, and you just you have to take coach's word on the production from the skill receivers, but they did have a great practice against the Cowboys, but the Cowboys are the Cowboys at the same time. So the concern is rising here in Denver. What do you think, Nat? What do you got for him? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I actually want to hear a little bit more about your thoughts on Russell Westbrook. I mean, not Russell, Russell Wilson joining the team. Um, you know, some like there have been some recent rank <clears throat> rankings that have come out. Ooh, something in my throat. <clears throat> and um, there have been some recent rankings and some people are saying like he's being underrated. Some people think he's being overlooked. So what are your thoughts on his addition to the team and like what he'll do? Because I'm excited to see him play. Well, the first thing is even with missing games last year, Russell Wilson was still top 10 in completions and yardage over 30 yards. So he has one of the best deep balls in the entire NFL. And the other thing I can tell you from winning a championship, he's bringing that experience into a very young team that lacks any playoff experience. And some of those things that make a difference are, hey, it does matter to get out to the practice field on time. It does matter to have a great blitz period. But then there's off the field things that you really can only learn from a champion in the NFL in professional sports. Ticker requests, they don't matter, right? And I told my younger players when I was in the NFL, hey, my family comes in at Saturday at 2 p.m., and I leave for the hotel at 3 p.m. Your job is not to make your family happy while you chase a championship. They were just fine before you went on this journey. They'll be fine again. So not only does Russell Wilson bring that deep ball, that big play excitement, but he also creates opportunities for players to become professionals off of the field without having any playoff experience. What, what, are, what are, are your thoughts about on the... Go ahead, go ahead, Natalie. I'm sorry, go ahead. Uh no, I'm sorry. What are your thoughts on him? Like the comments he made kind of like basically almost like he's going to be more involved in the offense or I guess maybe decision making around that. Um, do you think that's a good thing? Bad thing? What are you expecting from that? Well, that's par for the course for veteran quarterbacks who have won a Super Bowl and played in two and talking to George Payton. I said, how much do you talk to Russell? And he said, I talk to Russell every day. Now, some of that could just be about, hey, I saw this guy. You know, Michael's doing fantastic in the red zone. Are you liking what he's bringing to the roster? Should we put him on? You know, those conversations can be many things. But you should have your quarterback a part of what's going on, especially offensively. Playing with Peyton Manning and Ben Roethlisberger, I can tell you, they absolutely had input on everything from the food, travel, to their actual roster. So that's par for the course. And it's interesting to me, uh, a little bit inconsistent, <laughs> that people want to point that out for Russell Wilson, especially considering Tom Brady just took 10 days off in the middle of training camp. So a veteran quarterbacks who have won a championship get tremendous leeway in the NFL. And in Seattle, I'm not sure that he had that opportunity with Pete Carroll, who very much wants to be the face of the Seattle Seahawks and now is. Uh, I wonder he said what so you many think things, about that division. Wait. Yeah, what, what do you think about that division? Uh, because in the offseason, it sounds good. You know, Broncos get Russell Wilson. You're like, oh, man, the Broncos are going to make the playoffs. And then the Chargers, 
You know, uh, they pick up Mac and they pick up JC Jackson who's hurt now. Oh, no, no, hey, hey the, the Chargers are going to make the playoffs and Kansas City is Kansas City and the Raiders get Devontae Adams. But it, now when you start to play the games, you understand that. Okay. Yeah, you can make some additions in the offseason, but everybody's not going to make the playoffs. As you look at the division now, not in the offseason when everybody looks great, but now as you look at it as we're close to the start of the regular season, how do you assess it versus how you assessed it in April or May? Well, I believe that people are not giving the Chargers enough credit. You're absolutely right, Michael. I mean, they got Khalil Mack. J.C. Jackson was a huge pickup. And if their coach can actually learn how to call a field goal, they're in the playoffs last year. That's a dynamic group. They got some some offensive line help in the draft as well. And then you look at the Kansas City Chiefs. Do not sleep on Juju Smith-Schuster going to the Kansas City Chiefs. That's going to be a big pickup. Now, yes, the, the Raiders got Devontae Adams, but I've also had Josh McDaniels as a head coach. There's a lot to be desired, and he turns off the locker room pretty quickly. So – I don't I think you're going to see the Raiders at the bottom of the AFC West and it's going to be a dogfight between the Broncos Chargers and Chiefs and really all three of them could theoretically be in the playoffs if two teams you know had that 11 and 5, 11 and 6 record in our wild card teams but you may see a 10 win team from the AFC West on the road in the in the wild card round of the NFL playoffs this year absolutely I want to um, go back to something you said when you were like, you were kind of surprised at like the way people are reacting to Russell Wilson, because this is normal. What, what do you think it is about him? Why they're reacting differently to him versus other quarterbacks who this is par for the course? Well, I mean, that's a, that's a very complex question, you know, as you know, but I, part of it could just be the fact that people haven't seen Russell Wilson, you know, because on that West coast, there's a tremendous bias, whether it's basketball, baseball, NFL, hockey, you know, the East Coast games get seen. So I don't think people have seen a lot of Russell Wilson. I mean, you ask most people, their only memory of Russell Wilson is ha is not handing the ball off to Marshawn Lynch, right? <laughs> so that's part yeah. of it. And and I think there's also just a there's an amnesia effect in the NFL, right? Whether it's, hey, you know, we're doing enough for this group or we're, we're trying to make changes or things like I played with Tim Tebow. He was a very different guy, you know, and he and he was honest. And the thing I loved about him is he was genuine all the way through but even here in denver you're hearing people say well he, he talked you know he's so he, he's so you know cavalier he's talking in a different way i always feel like i'm in a boardroom i'm like well, well how did tim tebow talk how does tom brady talk how does aaron Rodgers right. talk so you know and all of us who are parents we know you have to change your language at times right to to make sure the message gets across i just don't i think it's a, a combination of russell wilson not being known to many people and then you got, you know, his, his wife, Sierra, is a musician. So people I don't think have seen him and understand how hard he works. I called the game last year for Westwood One when they were playing. The Steelers were playing the Seahawks. And Russell was out, but he was going through drills, you know, walk, calling plays, making hand signals. And I got down to the field, and he was still going. I said, Russ, what are you doing? And he looks at me. He goes, we're in the fourth quarter, Ryan. And he turns back and goes to it. So that's the kind of work ethic that Russell Wilson has. And I believe people just haven't seen that. And I think we're forgetting how much we love when the cheesy talk and things like that come from other players from a different background. Yeah, so, yeah I like the way you said that, Ryan. You said it's a, uh, it's a complex question. Are there any other complexities there? Because you brought up a couple <laughs> of them. Do you want to do you want to drill down some more? Is it like because I, I, I you know players have backed away from it. I remember there was some criticism in Seattle. And it was anonymous sourcing and guys never really confirmed it, but they never backed away from it either. Some players said, hey, he's not black enough. Uh, and that that opens up a whole uh, different level of conversation. He's not one of the guys. Do you think that's that story or some of those stories about Russell Wilson continue to kind of hover over him today when people get into analysis of who he is and what kind of team builder he is from the quarterback position? Absolutely. I mean, as a multiracial guy, and, and thank you, Natalie. I heard I heard you repping for us, Obama black, light skinned brothers. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. But absolutely, you live life on a bridge <laughs> when you're multiracial, right? And mm. whether it's you're not good enough for Ooh, one say group that again. or another, <laughs> say that say again. again. Oh, say yeah. You live on a bridge again, when you're Ryan. multiracial. You live on a bridge because mm. you see 
Woo. You know, you go to the barber shop. Oh man, you can't get no haircut anyways, man. I got this beautiful goatee. I need to get trimmed up. You know, you're always explaining yourself. And the unique thing about living on the bridge is you see the constant inconsistencies uh, that people will apply. And no doubt, hey, I'm happy to do a cannonball in the pool. I mean, the fact that Russell Wilson has never had, or I think it's like one or two votes for MVP, that's insane. I mean, we're not hold, we're not being consistent in the standards that we hold. And the fact that you're hearing more about rookie quarterbacks who are not going to have a great season than Russell Wilson, who's been to two Super Bowls and won one, shows that inconsistency. And that's part of our job, too, as media members, is to highlight that inconsistency and give people an opportunity to just enjoy the game of football like they're enjoying the return uh, of brother from another. <laughs> I like, I like that. that. Smooth. <laughs> Let me ask you this, Ryan. Uh, let, let's switch. And, you know, my allegiance is to uh, the greatest university, one of the greatest universities in the land, not just the United States, but in the world. That's the Ohio State University. So <laughs> I'm wondering, I'm wondering, uh, is Notre Dame, is Notre Dame about that life? Is Notre Dame ready for Ohio State to begin the season? That's a really tough ask for that team and specifically the head coach, coaching officially his second game, but really his first regular season game against Ohio State. Are they ready? Absolutely. This is why you go to Notre Dame. Notre Dame could beat the Pac-12, ACC, and Big Ten champion in the regular season. And this is exactly why Notre Dame gives you the best opportunity on the field and off the field with its education. You don't run from these games. And listen, the road is real. In college football, you're going to have to beat USC, Ohio State. And if you're a championship caliber team, it doesn't matter where or when that game happens. It's an opportunity for you to whoop someone's tail. And what I love is Marcus Freeman has been so intent on the staff that he put around these players. He got Al Golden from the Super Bowl losing Cincinnati Bengals to come and coach defense, right? He's got plenty of different talented players and coaches, but coaches who have played the game, which is a huge difference when it comes to installing philosophies and plays and knowing when to call the right plays. And one of the things I love too, I talked to one of the stars at Notre Dame and he said, you know, last year I really only talked to my coach during, during practice and never had a cell phone number, never talked to him about life. I meet with Marcus Freeman every day and his coaching hit hits different. It's like when someone, it's like when your mom giving you advice versus a stranger, you know, his coaching is better because you know, he loves you. And that's a tremendous difference. And the thing we always miss in the college football game are these are young developing athletes. They need role models and they need expectations. And not only has Marcus Freeman done that himself, but he's put a staff around him that wants the best for the kids, has experience, and has experience playing the game. It's going to be a fun one to watch. I'll give you the old Mortimer bet, Michael. I'll bet you a dollar. We'll, we'll go Mortimer. We're back in business, baby, because we're taking that. We're taking that <laughs> win week one, baby. You said one dollar. Okay, one dollar. Okay. All right, look, I'll take that. I'll take that. I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, can we just go back to the NFL really quickly? I do have one more question for you on the Broncos since, you know, that's your specialty. Um, I'm curious. I, I saw earlier um, that in the summer, Condoleezza Rice has become a part owner um, in the Broncos. And she, she, she'll she be, what, I think, the second Black woman who's part owner um, for the team or part of the ownership group. So has that had, like, I don't know, what's been the reaction to that? Does it matter? Is her ownership large enough that it even matters or is it just like the name i'm just curious like what the reaction is around the organization to her becoming a part owner and what it means for the broncos in terms of having a, another black woman who's part of the ownership group well it absolutely matters i mean i have three kids and my middle's my daughter and we were watching the news and my daughter turns to me and she goes women can be in sports too i'm like oh yeah absolutely really? and not only that you got melody hobson i mean she's on the board she, former ceo and on the board at starbucks and then they brought lewis hamilton you can't get more bulletproof than those three to bring to an ownership group and i really credit the walton penner family because this is what they wanted greg penner who's kind of going to be the managing member there of that ownership group said, we always want diverse perspectives. It gives us a better chance to win. It gives us a better chance to compete. So they understand how powerful diversity is. Remember for all of us, 
Hiring and retaining diverse staff increases revenue 19 percent. So the Walton Penner Group wanted to get diversity on its in its ownership group. Not only did it get that, it got arguably the three best people you could get in that regard. I mean, Lewis Hamilton has over 100 wins, the most wins ever in F1, seven world championships. And this is a dynamic group that all of a sudden made the Broncos the coolest organization in the NFL. I love it. I love it, Ryan Harris. Uh, talking about dynamic group, dynamic broadcaster, you are. And you did a great job here, save for your, uh, I guess, misplaced Notre Dame prediction. Other than that, <laughs> if I'm grading you, uh, it's at like 9.5 out of 10, 9.75. I mean, look, I want a but it's crisp $1 bill. I want it crisp I got when you. I get it from you in I'm September. Gonna crisp $1. I'm gonna I'm up it to five. I'm up to five. <laughs> I'll give you five with a win. It's not gonna happen. I want my I want my dollar bill. I want it all pennies. I want it all pennies to kind of replicate all those Buckeyes we get on the helmets. Oh, those are pennies. Buckeyes. You put that picture in front of somebody. Buckeyes not the word that's gonna come out. I tell you what, you just got you got served by Natalie and company. You sure you want to say that the team's gonna win for sure? I mean, you ain't got a good track for record sure. recently. I don't want to tap. I, I don't want to tiptoe here. Listen, you're gonna be, you're gonna be loud. If you're gonna be wrong, be loud and wrong, loud and wrong. Hey, Ryan, I love it. Oh, always good to see you, brother. Uh, come back soon. See you soon. Hey, thanks for watching, brother, from another on YouTube. Make sure you hit subscribe before you leave, and be sure to watch us three to five p.m. Eastern time on Peacock. Appreciate you.